bells. In a large storm, the bells could ring for hours. I want to invent things like Dr. Franklin someday. Me too. I wish I had a fancy education like he did. Fancy education? Let me tell you about Ben's fancy education. What kind of lies are you filling my son's head with? Come here, Charles. They're not lies, sir. Would you like to hear for yourself? I insist on hearing for myself, so I can be sure to correct them. Charles just told us Dr. Franklin had a fancy education. Wonder where the kid heard that. Sir, that is simply not the case. Dr. Franklin grew up in Boston, directly across from Old South Church, in a home filled to bursting with 12 brothers and sisters. Ben was crushed to learn his family could no longer afford to send him to class. He was nine years old. Like this, father? His father put him to work in the family business, making candles. Ben <laughs> spent the money he earned on his greatest love, books. Ben Franklin had no fancy education, Charles. Ben Franklin taught himself. Does your family borrow books from the Library Company of Philadelphia, Charles? Of course. Ben Franklin founded it, along with the American Philosophical Society, the Union Fire Company, the College of Philadelphia, and the Pennsylvania Hospital. Charles, have you ever had the misfortune to be sick or injured? Never. The boy's strong, like his father. You're both lucky. And if you lived in the days before Dr. Franklin founded that hospital, being healthy would have made you even luckier. Many poor, ill, and insane people were reduced to wandering the streets of Philadelphia. It was a terrible situation. <laughs> Pennsylvania Hospital, there's a place for the sick. Just as importantly, people started learning how to be doctors. This awful war gave them a chance to learn firsthand about the human body. the terrible suffering, they've taken to the battlefields. There, they've been confronted with every injury and sickness you could imagine. And then some. <sighs> Thanks to our doctor's newfound experience, people are being cured of illnesses and healed from injuries in ways that were never possible before. Mr. Montgomery, did you ever read Dr. Franklin's Poor Richard's Almanac? Dr. Franklin published the first edition of Poor Richard's Almanac when he was 26 years old. It contained all the usual weather reports, recipes, and predictions. What set it apart were the lively writing and witty sayings. A penny saved is a penny earned. There are no gains without pains. A learned blockhead is a greater blockhead than an ignorant one. He that lies down with dogs shall rise up with fleas. Library, philosophy, college, almanacs, all very amusing. But my money's no longer worth anything. I'm tired of this war. 
and Ben Franklin, as much as any other man, started us on this road to ruin! Mr. Montgomery, you have to understand where Dr. Franklin's deep commitment to freedom comes from. He wrote, in 1770, my brother James returned from England. With a press and letters to set up his business in Boston. I signed indentures when I was but 12 years old to serve as an apprentice for the next nine years of my life. Presenting this week's issue of the New England Current. Featuring the latest column by Mrs. Silence Dogood. Listen. I reflected in my mind on the extreme folly of those parents who, blind to their children's dullness and insensible of the solidity of their skulls, will need send them to the temple of learning, by which she meant Harvard College. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? It's very funny, Aldrich. I'd love to know who this sharp-tongued lady really is. James, I am Mrs. Silence Dogood. I've been writing that column and slipping it under the door in the middle of the night, watching everyone laugh at my words, but never being able to take credit for them. Do you know how that feels? James grew increasingly abusive with his 17-year-old brother. Aren't you finished yet? I don't want to be here all night. I'm hurrying, I'm hurrying. You did that on purpose! It was an accident! I don't believe you! And I've had enough of your disrespect! Dr. Franklin left soon after. He never forgot his brother's harsh and tyrannical treatment, Mr. Montgomery. That's where Dr. Franklin got... That aversion to arbitrary power, which that has stuck to me through my whole life. It's also one of the reasons he's taken such a strong stand against slavery. Slavery is the economic foundation of our southern states. And many of us in the north have made our profits from slave labor too. With all respect, sir, whoever freed you made a mistake. That said, I admit you do make solid points about Benjamin Franklin. You are entitled to your opinion about slavery, sir. Though by what you say, you would deny me mine. Where's Charles? Where's my son? And where's Henri? <laughs> Look out! I can't control him! didn't get to hear you tell me about your trip. Uh -huh. Moses! Thank you, sir. I am glad you are a free man. You are welcome. And I hope someday you will say that to an African man who did not just save the life of your son. James, Sarah, and Henri. I know you wish you could see me, but as you can't, I will describe myself to you. Figure me in your mind as jolly as formerly, and as strong and hearty, only a few years older. Very plainly dressed, wearing my thin gray straight hair that peeps out from under my fine fur cap. Think how this must appear among the powdered heads of Paris. Still, they mob me. On behalf of the British Crown, I would be most... Good evening. I don't believe it. Oui, 
regardez Sacré bleu Bonsoir, bonsoir. <rire> Côte de Virgin, Ben Franklin at your service. Dr. Franklin, what a surprise. Welcome to Versailles. A man of my years is happy to be welcomed anywhere. <laughs> But I tell you this, there have been unknown people as great as any of the most famous. However, my dear friends, if you would not be forgotten as soon as you are dead and rotten, either write things worth reading or do things worth writing. And children, I am quite certain that you shall. <laughs>